Hi, Chad. Thanks for uh, sending me your videos. Um, you clearly have um, the ability to play some good golf because I see a lot of really, really good things in your golf swing. Um, but I do see um, a couple of things that I think uh, we could fix fairly easy and, and help you play even better. Um, I would say just first of all, looking at your swing from both face on and down the line swing, um, I would say the best part of your golf swing is your pivot. Uh, your lower body action is really nice. Um, the way you are able to rotate your pelvis open in the downstroke, uh, the way that your pressure moves from the trail foot to the lead foot in the downstroke is, is super, super nice. Um, this is a very, very easy lesson for me because it's a common flaw that I deal with um, often when I'm working with players. And it's, it's not a very well understood concept with golf instructors um, at, at the moment, but you know, hopefully that's, that's changing and, and instructors and players are becoming more aware of this. But if we look at your takeaway here, and that's where this is the only change I would make in your golf swing uh, is backswing related. As you start the club away, you have the classic move. Um, I've, I've seen it so often that I've actually started to deem, I've gave it a nickname, and it's the start the lawnmower move. And what I mean by that is instead of turning the back and shoulders to create a backswing and a hand path that moves inward, you actually just kind of pull your elbow back behind you. Um, so it's an overflexing of the right elbow without really, really turning the shoulders very much, okay? Now, this is a two-fold problem because once you pull that elbow back, what it does is it steepens the shaft. It gets the shaft more vertical, and the reason for that is because your left wrist starts to extend, okay? Now, extension in the wrist would be cupping, um, and the cup, th those wrist angles are going to have an impact on a number of factors speed club face um, alignments and also club path direction all right so the first thing you do is steepen the shaft because you pulled that right arm behind you and at about this point in the backswing because there's nowhere else for the right arm to go the right arm actually starts to internally rotate so your right shoulder right now is internally rotating kind of in this direction and that further steepens the shaft it also shortens your backswing so you have the deadly combination of a short backswing with a vertical shaft with an open club face and i'm not saying that you can't play good golf from there i'm just saying it's very very difficult and the reason why is we know that this shaft, to be very, very functional and to hit good, good golf shots, has to go from somewhere in this ballpark where it's at now to in transition. It's got to pitch a long ways in this direction in the downstroke. The problem is the swing is so short, there isn't enough time to allow that to occur. So what happens when you start to unwind Lower body is opening up beautifully like it should. The shaft is steep through the shoulder here, and the left wrist is still cupped, still extended. Okay, so you should be. Um, the, the conclusion I want you to draw with the wrist angle and the cupping is there, is there a direct correlation with this club face? I would like to see the club face in a much more shut position, a much more closed position, and I'd like to see the shaft much more closer to flattening out about this much at this point in your downswing. So you can see we've got a ways to go there. Um, an example of what I'm talking about, of what we're looking for here, let's backtrack for a second. Let's go, let's go back to your backswing. In the backswing, we know that the club gets put on some type of backswing plane. And I'll use the term plane because I'm sure you're familiar with that. All right. I want you to think about the golf ball, your backswing relative to the ball line. And if I drew a straight line down the butt of your club, where would the butt of the club point? Well, it's two feet inside the golf ball or way inside the golf ball. Okay. We would want the back we'd want the club to point somewhere a little bit closer to just gently inside the golf ball. So say somewhere in this ballpark here. 
So at this point in the backswing, you could see just by that illustration how much flatter that left or that sh that shaft should be in the backswing. Now, what can help us with that? Number one, not throwing this wrist into extension and keeping this wrist in more flexion, more of a bowed type of position, would help us flatten that shaft. If you if you if I just could grab you from this position and simply twist your left wrist into flexion. And that's the only thing that I adjusted. Your shaft pitch would go from here to probably somewhere in this ballpark just by changing your wrist angle. Okay? And then further um, shallowing of that shaft or flattening that shaft pitch would be by lead forearm pronation. And that would just be simply by rotation of the forearm in that direction. Do my best to draw lines there so if you think if you hold your left arm out in front of you and you put your thumb straight up in the air turning your thumb to the right would be pronation okay that's going to further flatten that shaft so if you look at this golfer on the right he's a great example for you i think similar builds and and all that but i want you to watch his takeaway and you can see right off the bat how his left wrist is a little bit bowed a little bit arched and I'll take you back to similar positions. So you're not all that different right here. I would say your left wrist is probably close to flexion because you've got the sweet spot very much inside your hand. So I'd say your wrist is flexing there. You need to continue with that and carry that up because as you start to go vertically, you stand that shaft up, internally rotate that right arm, and cuff that wrist. Now watch the player on the left. He just turns and rotates. And you can see, so the dead giveaway in the flexion or extension of the wrist is looking at the back of the glove. You can see how I can see the logo. You can see how I can see, you know, most of the back of that left hand. And also look at the right arm position there. So because he externally rot he's externally rotating his right arm, He's not pulling his elbow behind him. You can see that the shaft pitch is much flatter. And then from there, he just keeps turning his shoulders to the top. And there's the top of the backswing position. Versus yours. Just dead vertical extension. So this left wrist extension is affecting two things. The right wrist angle as well. So the right wrist should be more bent back. The right arm should be more externally rotated. And the left wrist should be more in flexion. And just by changing your wrist angle alone, it's probably going to put your shaft pitch probably somewhere in this ballpark right here. If I could just simply reach into the screen and take your wrist angle and go from extension to flexion, we'd, we'd already move it that far. Now, here's a couple of other things I'm going to add to this, and I generally don't give more, more than one thing to work on in a lesson because I don't want to um, bombard you, but you look like a pretty skilled golfer to me, so I'm going to give you a little bit more. There's no reason for your backswing to be this short. Um, you don't have any physical limitations. You look like a good athlete. Um, you just have poor mechanics, okay? Now, the reason why your shoulder turn is so short is because you have restriction in your lower body. Uh, it looks to me like you're working very hard to maintain knee bend in this trail leg. And um, if you look at the golfer on the right, you can see that he's freely turning his hips on very much a tilted angle, and he's allowing this right leg to really string, straighten, it out, straighten out and lengthen and you can tell by, you know, he's turning his hips more than you because of this daylight I can see between his knees there. Whereas in your case, you, you don't have any of that. So you're really, really holding on to this right knee bend, which is restricting your pelvis rotation, which in turn is restricting your shoulder rotation, which is probably how you got to standing the shaft up and lifting your arms in the beginning of your golf swing infancy. Um, if you want to look at uh, some examples of 
um, sort of real uh, rear leg um, models. You know, I can throw more than a few up there. So there's Nicholas. Sneed. Palmer. You know, mo more modern day examples. Bubba. DJ. So you can see that none of these guys are restricting. And their lower and their trail leg looks very, very different from yours. Um, but Dustin Johnson's a very good model for you to be thinking about right there. Straighten out the right leg, high right hip, big hip turn, big shoulder turn, left wrist inflection at the top. Um, those are the key takeaways for you. All right? Hope this video helps you. Call me or send me an email if you have any questions.